I have prepared my annual iOS gift guide, and Leo will comment upon I'm, it. I'm very excited about that. <laughs> yeah, that's all I can do. I am going to show you how to become an MC Master DJ in your own right. And my favorite podcast app just got a huge update. Oh, my. It's time for iOS Today. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is... Is Twit. iOS Today is brought to you by Eero. Never think about Wi Fi again when you can have brilliant, hyper fast, super simple Wi Fi with Eero. Double E R O. And now get total network protection with Eero Plus. Visit Eero.com slash Twit and get $100 off the Eero Base Unit 2 Beacon Package and one year of Eero Plus when you enter the code Twit at checkout. And by Grammarly. Grammarly is a communication tool that helps people improve their writing to be mistake-free, clear, and effective. Start writing confidently. Go to Grammarly.com slash iOS today to get 20% off a Grammarly premium account today. Hello, everybody. Welcome to iOS Today, the holiday edition i'm leo laporte i'm megan maroney <laughs> and uh, we're here actually to help you do some holiday shopping for the ios fan in your life ios in our definition includes the ipad the iphone the apple watch the apple tv yes and so black friday is over cyber monday is over we decided now we're going to present the idea so that yeah. you can pay full price for them no here's the good news <laughs> I was shopping even today. There's still great deals there out there. Yeah. It's a it's a it's a month long celebration. Well, okay, I'm gonna start with my favorite gift to give this season, and that is the iFixit toolkits. Because instead of buying your uh, your family another phone or another iPad or another anything, why not just teach them how to fix it? Or old one. That's Fix right. their old one. Yes. So, you know, the old teach a man to fish, he eats forever or whatever it is. How does that go? He'll spend, give a man a fish. Give a man a fish. <laughs> he'll eat for a day. Teach a man to fish. He'll spend thousands on the fancy equipment. <laughs> yes, exactly. Okay, so... Uh, we're going to teach a man to fix his iPhone and a woman. Wow, that's and a lot a child. of peppermint. Okay. Holy cow. Sorry, he, he's enjoying his coffee. Um, are you ready? <laughs> Did you get extra peppermint? Wow. Well, <laughs> I thought it'd be fun. The it is the holiday season, but Starbucks apparently no longer does red cups. Yeah. Um, they do some, and they and I got, I, I couldn't bring myself to get a pumpkin spice, so I got a Gur peppermint milk. I guess that's grande. Grande, yes. I saw, I was watching. I'm sorry, am I distracting you? No, no, you? go, go, go ahead. Go ahead, finish up, and then I'll eat. I was watching a TV show where a guy goes into a Starbucks and says, wait a minute, you've got a tall, grande, and venti. Tall means big, grande means big, venti is Italian for 20. Yeah, none of this makes sense. Okay, it doesn't. go, go it doesn't. right ahead. Thank you um, very much. Yeah. So this is a good thing. I bought... This last year for many, many people, the iFixit the, toolkit. Well, there are several toolkits. Oh, wait, well, show me which one you've got. This is, oh, I have three, but this is the Pro Tech Toolkit. We should mention that they are not a sponsor currently, but they have been in the past. Yeah, and I mean, in case you're not familiar with iFixit, they, uh, it was started by Kyle Weens in his dorm room, and he wanted to fix his iMac, and he couldn't, and he had worked at a repair shop before, and he realized that um, it was hard. It was hard even then, ten years ago, or I think it was two thousand three, so fifteen years ago. And so he started trying to sort of reverse engineer uh, fixing iPhones and iPads and Samsung phones, Android phones, all technology. And then he created the tools in order to do this because and they don't make it easy. The manuals in order to know what to do and sell the parts to the degree that Apple lets him. It's a great, you know, it's a really good company. I really like iFixit. And you interviewed Kyle I did. at Triangulation mm -hmm. a couple of weeks ago, so people want to know more about Kyle. They've done a lot uh, also in the right to repair yes. movement. And you know, electronics recycling, it's a great company. So this is, uh, I, I haven't seen this packaging This yet, is so this the is $60 new. Pro Tech. That's the one with case. all the heads, right? I love uh, it, that. Let's, let me show you what it has. It has Phillips, Flathead, Torx. See, Torx, Torx is an Apple invented one, so you couldn't get into the Macintosh. 
Uh, it has the Torx security, the Pentalobe. That's the one that's currently used on MacBooks. Macs, yep. MacBooks. Yep. Um, the G, the JIS, the Hex, the TriPoint, the Nut Driver Square, Gambit, Spanner, Triangle, Standoff Bit for iPhone, Oval Drive, Magnetic Pickup Bit, Sim Eject Bit. Oh, it's got a Sim Ejector. That's cool. It's Some of those bits are really arcane. They're not things that you would use in repairs unless maybe you're working on a um, McDonald's Happy Meal. Some of those, one of those bits is for a Happy Meal. I'm not sure which. Probably the Gambit. <laughs> the <laughs> I guess. Uh, it also has the standard spudger and the Hallbird spudger. She said spudger. <laughs> it did. Those are uh, little wedges designed to take apart. You need spudgers to take apart modern electronics because they're glued together. So, you know, the big thing about iFixit that I love is they're fighting not for everyone to repair their stuff, but just for the idea of repairing right. and repair shops. And so last year I got Milo one of these smaller kits and... You know, he's made, he's actually fixed iPhones of friends and family. And, you know, so he wants to start thinking about creating a business out of this, um, you know, fixing everybody's phone and because he has the tools. And then as long as they get the screen or the battery or whatever it is that they need to fix. So there's the, uh, the Pro Tech Toolkit. Very nice. And by the way, there's a, on the iFixit blog, Scooter X has found actually the history of the Torx. Oh. Yeah. So that's kind of The history cool. of the Torx. Yeah, the Torx. Uh, maybe Apple didn't invent it, but I, I'm pretty sure I remember that they used it to the consternation of many hmm. to uh, to seal up their Macintosh so that people you know couldn't get into it. Yeah. So uh, the if the, if you're looking, that was sixty dollars. If you're looking for more that's of a good a, deal. Yeah, exactly. You're looking for more of a stocking stuffer, uh, the Essential Electronics Toolkit. That's twenty dollars. It's a little mini. Um, so it has these. Tools. I, th I think it also includes the spudger. Uh, the spudger, the jimmy, the opening tool, six opening picks, the suction handle. That's how you get stuff. You know, you have to... <laughs> they must have a lot of fun making up names for this. <laughs> or do they? Maybe not. Maybe this is actually what they're called. I don't know. Um, so some of the things that this one doesn't have, like the wristband, the anti-static wristband. I so. never use that. That's never a problem. <laughs> yeah, that Static explains, electricity that explains is a lot. fake news um, as so far as I'm concerned. I feel like this isn't just a gift, but it's a message. And I, I am sure <laughs> what, that What would the message be? Fix your stuff. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> that that uh, phones are not innovating at the rate that they have in the past. So why and, throw it out to get right. a new one that doesn't do anything yes. more? Yes. And right. every 9 to 25-year-old who's asking their parents for a new phone... Give them this. <laughs> Yes. What? And you're, give them your old phone and this, or give them, remind them that they have a perfectly good phone and this. That's awesome. No, I think actually that is, if you have a geek in your life, uh, you know, you know, you know the person, at, at, at the uh, the husband who uh, disappears into the garage after dinner every night, that kind of thing. God knows what he's doing out there, but I bet you he could use that. Or if you want to make a geek. Like, I feel like a lot of parents buy gifts for their kids, like aspirational. Like, I'm going to get a, a telescope. Geek. You could build a geek with these. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to get a telescope or I'm going to get a science kit or make a repair geek. Um, they're going to be needed. It's a fun thing. You know, my, Michael's been doing it. He's, uh, he just turned 16. Happy birthday, Michael, yesterday. He's been building models and stuff. And this would be a great, you remind me, this would be a great thing for him. Yeah, this is for fi fixing yeah. drones, fixing yeah. anything. Yeah. Um, so this is the Manta driver kit. And oh, this, I haven't seen this. This is the this universal is, bit holy kit. Holy camoly. So it's all This little, must little be bits. new. Holy moly. So this is that, it's all, those are magnetic. They drop into that handle and, uh, and they have two sizes. And then, uh, and then, but you got every bit and christened them there. Torx, Pentalobe, Hex, Hex Security, TriPoint, TriWing, Nut Driver Square, PosiDriv. You gotta have a yeah. posi driv. Yeah. Everyone needs a posi. Look at there's driv. the posi driv, third from the left. <laughs> That's a great bit. The clutch. Oh yeah. Uh, plus it has oval bit, Schrader valve, standoff bit it's for got iPhone. A Schrader valve. Hook drive, sim eject bit. You know you love the sim eject bit. Wow. Uh, one quarter to four millimeter adapter, um, and as you said, it has it has a little place for everything. You know who'd um, really love this, Pete from Simti. He would love this, right? Yeah. This is he's got a pocket. Oh no, that's your glasses. Yeah. They went. Oh, went to the University of Ampex. That is, you probably know all those bits. Yeah. What's the gambit? You ever hear that one? The Schrader valve. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was wrong because the gambit is not for McDonald's tools. The Mick gambit is for McDonald's <laughs> toys. Yeah. Um, so I just love these tools. And, that is an awesome, um, awesome toolkit. And I, the prices I gave you were the standard price, but they, I think even yesterday they were on sale. Special. They might be on sale again. Yesterday and, was Cyber Monday. And even though that's a ridiculously made up holiday, mm -hmm. there was still a lot of deals. Yeah. Out there. Yeah. There were a lot of deals. And even if you are spending more, know that you are supporting a company that's doing more than just selling stuff. Right on. You know, really trying yeah. to. That's, that's a good pitch for, for yeah. Kyle mm -hmm. company. Mm -hmm. Nice. Okay. So the next gift idea is much more expensive than any of those. And this is a, this is an item that is not new and we both have one and. Oh, oh don't tell me. Okay. I have no idea. And we've had it for almost a year, which I think is good because we both still use it. Which is how many, how often do you still have, you know, use some things that we've reviewed a year later? Is you it that glowing them? thing in front it's of you? It's not the glowing thing. I don't know. What are you? What, um, this it's is for good. the car. Oh, the Owly. Yes, the well, Owl camera. I love my camera. Owly. Yeah. So it came out about a year ago. I think maybe more of a year ago, but they just had a big update. So that's why. Should I, I buy the new Owly? Um, you don't need to buy a new camera. It's a software update. Oh, Okay. Um, so you don't need to buy. Uh, we're about. We're not about buying a bunch of new stuff today. No, no. Um, this so is owlcam.com. The yes, and it is um, the new thing that they have. They have like OnStar capability now. Oh. So um, it, if you have you know, a wreck, it'll call the cops. It will, and it will use the intercom. It uses the 4G. The you know the camera comes with 4G and has ah. like you know the subscription. So you have 4G, and it uses that 4G. So you don't need you know if you want OnStar, sometimes you have to buy a whole new car. Right. Um, but now you just have to buy the camera and it connects and then it'll, it won't use the camera if you're in an accident because it wants to protect your privacy, but it will use the intercom and connect to your phone. But the nice thing is if you're in an accident, the camera has already recorded the accident. Right. And uh, it, it, it automatically will start uploading images from the accident. Same thing if somebody breaks into your car because it has a camera that faces out over the hood, but also a camera that faces back into the cabin. Mm -hmm. And it, I, I, I have yet to use it for anything. Nothing's happened to yeah. me. Yeah. In a way, I feel like that's, you know, uh, thank you, Ali, for saving me because I've had no accidents. But if I were, you simply say, okay, presto, and the Ali takes the last, is it 30 seconds? I think so. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uploads it to your Ali site. And uh, it's I think this is a really great camera. Is Ali your affectionate term for it? Because it's the owl. I call it owl You love it so much that you've given it a pet name, Owly. Uh, it's, it's just, just owl. the owl. Okay. Why do I call it the owl? I don't know. I, don't I guess know. you love it. Um, I love it so much and it's so perfectly positioned and I t I've taken it out and put it back in so many times that I didn't want to. So I took a little uh, video um, of me in the car and you can see this uh, on my iPad and here's how it works. You're shouting at me in the chat room too. But you could just press the button. Hey, I'm just sitting outside in the parking lot. Still sitting outside in the parking lot. Yeah, now you have a video of you sitting. <laughs> so here's the thing. You did a, a not such a hey, really. Presto. I'm sitting outside in the parking lot. <laughs> I'm at work. <laughs> so it re record me because I didn't want to. I was recording myself. And then if you see, it says. It gets um, both it directions, says, though. So you gives, can see what. The clip yeah. was from the front and from mm -hmm. the back. I'll tell you why that's both a, a, a blessing and a not such a blessing is oh. if you have an accident, you have a video of the accident, but you also have a video of you looking at your phone. Oh, yeah. So mm -hmm. if they're now, on the other hand, you, if, you know, you can prove that you weren't, you know, you were paying attention and the accident happened. Uh, th I just think this is a great thing. It is easy to install, too. It, and what's unusual about the owl. Owl. E. <laughs> Is it? It plugs in. It plugs into the ODB two port, the mm -hmm. onboard diagnostics port, which is kind of underneath your dash. And the reason they do that instead of just plugging into a power port is that they get power all the time. It's automatically uh, get powered. Uh, so and it's very uh, elegant. You don't. You didn't do such a good job. But you can <laughs> you can trim those wires underneath as I have. Oh yeah. They give you even a little shoving tool a little spudger if you will yeah, reverse it is spudger. Kind of a spudger and it goes so you put it and so you don't see any wires it looks like it's installed but it's easy to remove uh has a little suction cup that it keeps it stable on the window i really think this is the best now there are other many other dashboard cams but this one i really think it's uh, it, because it has the lte built in mm -hmm. is really cool i i really like it i mean i use i haven't had an accident either but i do just record it for fun um just you know moments like when huck and i were in the car and then um we just we're going to a singing lesson isn't that cute 
<laughs> Isn't that cute? And look what what a great image. Yeah. So the reason that, I mean, it's very wide angle. So if somebody smashed your window, you'd get a video of them. Yeah. It detects those kinds of sudden right. uh, motion mm -hmm. and it will do, the bright, has bright cabin lights. So even at night, it's going to stun somebody with the bright lights, get the picture of them as they steal your stereo. And <laughs> somebody might, some wag in the chat room will no doubt point out, yeah, unless they steal your owly. I'm sorry. Why do I keep calling that? It's well, an owl. It's an owl. It, Did, was it, it used to be owly? Why is that in my mind? Anyway, yeah. But if somebody steals it, they say they'll replace it. Do they still offer that? I don't know. That's a yeah. good question. But that was you one get, of the things they did. But you get alerts when you get motion alerts when right. someone walks by your car. Um, There's you no, by the way, contract or anything. You get 60 clips a month. It's really, or 30 mm -hmm. clips a month. It's mm -hmm. a very good. Yeah, you can cancel any time. Yeah. Um, and 60 minutes a month. You, yeah, some, if someone breaks into your car, you get an alert right away. So you get a recording of it and you get an alert. On your phone. Um, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm guessing they would, if you had the video of it being stolen and you not getting notified, they probably would replace they it. They said, now this might have been early, in the early days when they first started, um, that if your owl gets stolen, we'll replace it. Uh, it but no one's st st stolen it. Yeah. Stealing it. No one has stolen. No one has stolen it. Um. Yeah, it was uh, founded by Andy Hodge, uh, who was the, he worked at Apple, he worked at is. HoloLens. What if my owl is stolen? It can okay. be tracked, disabled, and we replace it for free when you send the video. Mm. Isn't that nice? Mm -hmm. So you don't have to worry about it being stolen, because it is kind of an attractive thing sitting there. But I don't think anybody's that dumb that would break into your car and steal your camera well when you're at when it's dark outside if you get into your car then the, it lights up in your face yeah, so if i was going to rob Lisa someone bit, i would bright. oh i like it you don't mind that no because no. then you can see in your car yeah i mean your lights should turn on your car when you open the door anyway yeah. but uh yeah so up um, to 18 hours of hd driving footage 36 hours forward only it's pretty good i i think it's a great gift and i have really enjoyed it as of late because I have a 15 and a half year old, which means she's driving and, um, you know, I'd like, I'd like to be able to keep her safe in that way. And, uh, I, I would look for holiday specials, but they also offer a discount for first responders and military. Oh, so that's, that's nice. Yeah. I think yeah. this is a great company. Owlcam.com. We both, I bought mine. Did yeah. Did you buy yours? No, they sent it they to sent me. They sent it to mm -hmm. you. Yeah. So we should mention that. Yeah. Oh, sorry. They sent it to me. Um, I still like it. I still love it. You paid for it. And it's hard for me because you pay for everything. So Yeah, you don't really know what things cost. Leo <laughs> <No>. does. <laughs> oh, boy, but you I. did buy it. No, yes. I bought it because I thought, I, was it a Kickstarter? I can't remember how I found out about it. But I was very excited when it uh, was first announced. Yeah. yeah. I'd like to believe I told you about it, but maybe not. I don't know. It was big because, because Andy Hodge, he was the CEO and he worked for Apple and right. worked for Dropcam and it's worked great. for It's, it's got that feel to it. Yeah. 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 Uh, all right. Uh, my next item is called the Cup Pixel Sketch, which was also sent to me for review. I don't I know that. Say. I know that? they're a new startup. Um, and I don't know how I found out about this, but I think it was an Instagram ad. But this is a little art project. Here it is. The cup. Can you see that? Okay, John. In the, mm, the CP. Cup. C U C U C U Pixel. C U Pixel. Cup Pixel. Cup Pixel. Q Pixel. See you, Pixel. <laughs> and this has everything in this box to make a beautiful picture that um, I will show you everything in the box. This kind of gives me uh, kind of I have a little uh, post-traumatic from uh, Christmas's past when Jennifer would drag out the rubber stamps and we'd all have to make cards. Oh, is this like that? Is this no, a No, this is you're going to make. Um, what the heck? I, There's a, a lot of stuff in okay, there. Okay, you have. Uh, oh, a towel. Looks like oil paints. I sketched this. On a post-it note. Um, it's a canvas. Okay. Um, and you guys have seen me draw with it's my post-it note pencil. sized canvas. Yeah. Um, it's like tracing, but you use your iPad. So let's I'm very set confused. this up How here. How does this work? Okay. Maybe um, you can show the video from the website. So it's- Let's see um, a, a, the video from the web. Let's roll that tape. Yes. So Press that the, is how you sketch. See the- oh, Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So how do you take this, oh, and create this? Create a beautiful creation. So it's taking images from your phone or your iPad and turning them into canvas, actual that you draw. Paintings starts with the CU Pixel. 
you pick an image from the app or upload your own. I chose my dog, obviously. Yeah. And then it, it tells you to paint it? Well, see, you're sketching that. I'll show you. Show me. Is it taking a picture of you sketching it? Uh, no. Let's see. Here's the QPixel app. I feel this is offering people like me a ray of hope that it can't live up to. Well, no, I showed you. I sketched this, and I sketched this myself. Okay. Let's and see it. And you know I can't draw. Okay, so I picked a picture of Gilbert, my dog, yeah. and it comes with this little stand here. This is how, actually, I think people don't know this, but this is how Picasso works. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, so I do this. And it's a bit of a okay. Glare. So it's a it's a special iPad stand, which yes. is by itself worth something. Yeah, that's actually a pretty nice stand. And then I have this special pad here. Uh huh. And then I put the pad under, under. here next to the iPad camera. You can also use an iPhone. Oh, so the camera is going to see. Oh. Now we're going to find. Oh. The canvas. Okay. I've already started drawing on this yeah. one, so it okay. might... Okay. Device needs to find your mini canvas. Okay. Let there's... me try a new mini canvas. How many... Does it come with many mini? It comes with some extras and also... You'll be buying more mini. I need to... Mini cameras. So... Yeah. Uh-huh. And then... Oh. Okay. Let's try that. Place a new mini... Can... Maybe the light is off a little bit here. Place a mini canvas. I've placed it. Do you have to tilt it or anything? Does it have to? Maybe, maybe you're too tilted. Yes. That's probably it. It's like a. It's like an angle. It can't really. And is is your camera on the top of your iPad? Oh. Oh. <laughs> maybe that's the problem. Your iPad was a. There is no upside down with an iPad, but with the camera. With this, it might be that you want. Okay. The camera let's at the top. go back. And see if it's going to adjust. How much is this? Fifty dollars. Oh, so that's not too bad. Nope. They probably make it up in selling you mini mini canvases. Maybe. Because uh, you need more after you botch the first ten or twelve. Yeah. See, I'm I'm cynical because I'm such a. Okay, but now let's... Gilbert's upside down. Okay. Oh, whew, that was a relief. Okay. Oh, Gilbert. Oh, oh. Gilbert. 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 Okay. Whoa. Uh, okay. Huh. Here is. I hate me... it when the iPad does that, and that happens sometimes. Let's close the app. Then let's turn the iPad right side up. Yeah. Come on, iPad. Shake it. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> oh, your iPad is confused. There's Watch you. this. Okay. There you go. Okay. Ah, oh, thank you, Coop Coopixel. 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 <laughs> okay. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it doing that? Import a new picture, why don't you? Okay. Because it imported it up. So I don't know if this makes any sense to me either. But it's seeing the camera. That's the thing that it. the camera is. Well, maybe it'll work. Okay. Let's try Next. it again. Uh, huh. I feel like it's because of, of the angle. You can't tell it's a square or something. Yeah. And that says. Oh. Oh. oh, oh, oh. Oh, go. Gilbert, just, no, no, don't, yeah, okay, good, okay, good, I guess, okay, okay. good. It keeps, Pull it's it towards on you a little hole more. here. I'm... It's on a hole, so we have a hole in our desk. Yeah. Someday okay. we'll patch that. Uh, okay. This is not gonna, okay, let's arrange it. <laughs> not designed for TV. <laughs> so, let's just pretend Okay, so here. it thinks, it, it's it's superimposing. Yes, and it did work. A little bit of the dog. On the canvas. And so it's like it's it isn't tracing. It kind of is tracing. It's kind of tracing. So this did work perfectly at home, of course. Yeah, our lighting and, uh, and everything um, that makes it hard to do. And I'm then sure you would like just. You'd copy it. Yeah, you just kind of draw right there like that. Oh, that's and really cool. You, you draw in and then you can paint it afterwards. So you could do a, a fairly good job. Yeah. It's almost like paint by numbers. Yeah, kind of. I mean, it's like. Art is therapeutic, I think. And yeah. Well, if you like those coloring book programs, mm -hmm. I know people, my trainer, my personal trainer, big, strong, tough guy, spends hours coloring. I love that story. I know I know him. And I do just you know Will? Him. Yeah, I he's a him. sweet guy. So um, I think he would love this. Maybe I'll yeah. give him this so you he could be frustrated for the and holidays. And he has two dogs that are amazing. He or he could You do know his picture. dogs? Yeah, his son is friends with my son. Oh, Tyler. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, 
he could do a picture. It's Tyler's of his birthday baby. tomorrow oh, or day after tomorrow. Yeah, that's exciting. Um, I think this is a great gift because it's because it might not be something that you would buy for yourself, um, but I think it's a great it's gift. It's a clever idea. So you do sections of the portrait, right? Post-it note size sections, and then you assemble yes. nine of them into a full-size picture. And all the paint is included, the towel, the little water, everything that you need, the pencil sharpener. Now, do they assist you in color selection and stuff or just the line drawing and then it's up to you to... Yes, but they have... Uh, they. It's up to you to paint however you want. Right. Once you've got the sketch down, then you can paint. Then it's a coloring book, essentially, right? You're just painting. This actually is one. really, you did a really I good did job. I did that because it's really easy to do. Yeah. Like, you know that I'm not an artist. You've seen me with my Apple I Pencil. I do know that. Um, and so it's like tracing, but it's more fun and you get to use your iPad or your iPhone. Yeah. Um, and I think it's is a, a great gift because you're not asking them to, I love everything's included. You're not like, oh, here's a gift, but you also need to go buy paintbrushes yeah, yeah. and paint. How many of these squares, though, do you get? Uh, you get enough to do the, yeah, they're nine plus a couple extra. Okay. And then that one is just for practice. Oh, they have a practice one? Yes. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. That I would like. Can you wipe can you wipe it off? or you could probably erase it, yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's just pencil. pencil. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um. So... I love this gift. Fifty dollars could be also fun in a group, like if you're getting together for a holiday party and you all sure. have one to to paint together. Sure. Q pixel or C U pixel, pixel, cup pixel, Q pixel. Oh, it does have a recalibrate button, so maybe that's. Oh, I don't. Need to no, let's not. Let's not go there. <laughs> but I the, think it probably has to be somewhat square for it to see it. Yeah, right? and we don't want it to. Yeah, you need to like make sure the light in the room is evenly. It has to be evenly lit. Right. Clean your camera's device if needed. The other thing that I really like, and I did use this, is um, because I, I clipped them together and then I couldn't get them apart, and I was like, ah, what do I do? And they have a help, and they're basically always around, like to you know typically reply like in a human. few minutes. Oh neat. Yeah, Elad can, and he did respond. So if you get you know scared and or you're so just these like, snap oh, together help. in a way. You could just type. Nice. Help me. I'm not going nice. to because I don't want Elad to, but I think this is a good gift. And they're small, they're a tiny uh, little startup. Not And thank you. They did send me this for review. I will tell you I that. like it though. Mm -hmm. That's good. And we're, we're going to send it back with Megan's yes. chicken scratchings <laughs> yes. on it. Uh, and they didn't, I, I, I saw it first and reached out to them. So it wasn't like, they oh, just, nice. you know. No, I think this is, it really looks mm -hmm. nice. I like it. I'm going to continue to use the stand during the rest of this. It's a great stand. I might want to just keep the stand. Yeah. Yeah. That, I think for 50 bucks, the stand is worth it by itself. It's aluminum. It's nice. Something against art? It's a, uh, no, I'm just a lefty and I just, I, I'm not good at that. What about Abby? Does she like, she likes to draw. Abby's this would be a good gift artist. for her. But she likes to draw. She right? likes freehand. But She's it taking might be like classes and stuff. But yeah, maybe she not. She would, I think uh, somebody who's an artist or yeah. an aspiring artist might be insulted by it. So yeah. get it for somebody like Megan. I'm not, not an artist. <laughs> As we know, really nothing insults me. No. <laughs> you, you try. I try you do every your best. week. I don't, I just, no, I don't, I love you. I think you're I great. I know you do. I'm but that kidding. dress, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> kidding. Is that a Rent the Runway? It is a Rent the Runway. I like it a lot. Thank you've, you. Your wardrobe has been, you've you've upped it a notch. Um, I now have. I have to, mm -hmm. Now I have to kind of compete. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm you wearing really this do. festive uh, infinity scarf mm -hmm. made of Christmas lights. <laughs> I'm, I'm hip. Uh, I'm not done. I think I have two more. Well, I two know more. you must because I see two more things on the okay. table. Uh, this is Vector. <gasps> now, you, I saw, I showed We saw Vector. your review from saw... Tech News Weekly. This yes. is really cute. Um, he is a little robot from Anki. Now, Anki's done, this is the third or fourth generation this of this. This is the third, yep. third mm -hmm. yeah. Remember um, Osmo last year? Cosmo? Cosmo. It? Cosmo, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, it was Cosmo and Cosmo 2, and then this is uh, Vector, who really ups ups the ante on the AI. So it uh, looks like a little bulldozer. Little, yeah. And I mean little, the size of your fist. But uh, it uh, it has personality. See the eyes? They had somebody at Pixar work with them on those mm -hmm. eyes to make them like human. And you can say, hey, Vector. It doesn't fly. I don't know why they show it flying. <laughs> Does it fly? No, no, that was a bad, that video was about a bad robot. Oh, this, this is, is a, a good, good robot. robot. Hey, Vector. I have a question. Hey, Vector. <laughs> I have a question. You can't really hear. Let me he do it. He said ready. So ask it. Who is Leo Laporte? What? Who? <laughs> Who 
is Leo Laporte? I realize that there should be a name for how embarrassed you get when your like devices don't do what you're they're supposed to do, like AI embarrassment. Uh, hey, Victor, I have a question. Who is Leo Laporte? Leo Gordon Laporte is an American technology broadcaster, author, entrepreneur. And head of TV. That, that, I'm impressed. I like you know what I like about it. They didn't attempt to make it a human voice. It's a very robotic mm -hmm. sounding voice. So this is for kids, probably. Uh, it's for anyone who's interested in robotics. It's it's like an Amazon Echo. So and it actually in next week I think it will gain new abilities to be an Amazon Echo. So you can ask it anything that it'll have like you know, voice services. But will it have Amazon's voice, or will it have that silly? Robot That's voice. a good question. Yeah. I hope that it continues to have like the, the entrepreneur. Voice. Entrepreneur. Uh, hey, Victor. So you can oh, go ahead. Hey, Victor. Go explore. It's on its charging base right now, mm -hmm. but it can roll off of that. Let's just roll them off of there. <laughs> it's now it's exploring. So it's a little bulldozer, and it has edge detection. See, I so. think a, I think a six or seven year old would love this. Yes, the eyes are very expressive, and the head moves, which is something kind of new uh, for this generation. And um, you can change its eye color. You can play games with it too. I saw you and Jason playing uh, catch with blackjack. It. Black, you, you can say blackjack. Yeah. Hey, Vector. Oh, why are oh you look, going it's getting home? out of his charger. It's, I guess it needs to Maybe it's didn't have enough juice. It's embarrassed. That, it does that very well. It does that better than my Roomba does, though. Yeah, I want to point out. It really, it really gets back on its stand well. Yeah. Um, that's a, if that's the only thing it does, that's pretty good. <laughs> exactly. Wow. Uh, yeah, it'll give you the weather. It'll play blackjack. It'll take photos. How does photos. it play blackjack? Hey, Vector. Shall we play a game? Now it's exploring. <laughs> so it is. <laughs> Don't so, pick it up. <laughs> see, if you see this, uh, John, can you see it? Oh, oh, it's really mad because I picked it up while I was playing a game. It just asked you one another it's, card. It's really interesting on uh, with the eyes how it, just those two little purple squares can become so expressive that it really makes it, it humanizes yeah. it. Yeah, and he's like, put me down. It's like a cat. Hey, Vector. Play blackjack. It's actually smarter than a cat, mm -hmm. right? Well, yeah, I don't think cats are very smart because I'm allergic to them, but <laughs> it's smarter than a cat in some ways, but I mean, it's not going to kill you in the middle of the night like a cat would. Can you say, hey, Vector, beer me? No, hey, Vector, bring me a beer. No, it just it's wants really, to be put down. It's really disconcerted right yeah, now. Yeah, it is. But I think this is cool. Oh, and the edge detection means it won't fall off. It won't fall off, I Let's promise. see if we can tr get it to fall okay. off. Okay, we'll just keep him running around during the rest of the show, and you can show that, that he won't fall off. Does he still off. think he's playing blackjack? <sighs> How? So in real life, I presume you and the kids have played with him. Oh, yeah. He plays, he works pretty well. He's mm -hmm. he's not like as confused as he seems now. He gets um, shy on TV, I think. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it's... I don't know if it's going to get better, but it is, uh, it's not quite as good as the Amazon Echo in answering your questions yeah. like every time, but it's better than Siri. So let's <laughs> wow. just say that. That's saying, poor <laughs> Apple, <laughs> they must really be depressed. Uh, yeah, I, it's it's really cute. It has a lot of personality, as did the uh, Cosmo. Yeah. Um, and, but, uh, but with a lot more uh, capabilities than the Cosmo, they're getting better and better. Anki started a couple of years ago and i still have it the anki racetrack that mm -hmm. was very cool yeah what were those cars called i loved those yeah i really like i have them. Was, I, I i'll bring them in maybe I'll, next week's gonna be my gift mm. idea i can whoa <laughs> do you see that it tapped my ipad and then jumped leapt back yeah That's, it, so it really has some personality it has personality and it is better than my uh robot vacuum at you know fine at moving away from things as it should I'm be not trying to climb up yeah. them it doesn't try to do that yeah uh so not cheap 250 but Ooh. yeah yeah, um, you. I think it was. Uh, I think that there was, was interesting. A deal. So that avoided something up in the air, not just uh, mm. something on the ground. It avoided this little jack on my uh, iPad and went around it. That's 
pretty smart. Yeah. It's do you what it, it's I I'm going to just oh maybe it didn't avoid it. I <laughs> just ran into it. Uh it's it's obviously got not a super fast processor in it. Mm -hmm. and, and at that price and at that size I'm not surprised. It's probably more like an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi, but um so it's a little slow in responding, mm -hmm. but it's it's still sophisticated enough that it can do some interesting things. It's now getting entangled. I think it actually likes my uh, my dongle. <laughs> likes your dongle. It's playing, oh, it's it, now it walks rolling right over, my over your keyboard. keyboard. Interesting. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Uh, hmm. Yeah. Well, let's let's just let it keep going. Okay. And um, it has facial recognition. You can say, you know, uh, hey Vector, my Who name is I? Leo. Oh. Yeah. Hey say. Vector. My name's Leo. Hey Vector. <laughs> my name is Leo. Don't look at her. <laughs> It's looking at you now. It's got yeah. to be your Leo. Oh. oh, my name is Leo. Hey, Vector. Checking you out. Hi. Oh, it's narrowing its eyes as if it's angry. What did he say? Leo, don't look at her. <laughs> Leo, don't look at her. Don't look at her. <laughs> Leo, don't look. What, what do you mean? I trained him well. <laughs> Is that what he's saying? <laughs> it says I thought it said Leo, don't look at art. What? Oh, he thinks your name is Leo. Don't look at her because you said <laughs> don't, Leo, don't look at her. <laughs> but now. My name is Leo. I can see hours of fun with this. Well, especially because every time it looks at you, it's going to say, Leo, don't look at her. Leo, don't look at her. <laughs> Leo, don't look at her. my name. Yes, Vector. <laughs> Vector. Hey, Vector. Who am I? I think actually this is a this would be great for somebody in his you know middle school age uh -huh. would have so much fun yes. with this. I'm sure Huck and Milo just love yes, this. Yes, they do. How about Annabella? She's high school age. She well, she was scared of it because I just had it uh plugged in in the and it will just talk randomly and when anyone <laughs> says don't look at her. I'm sorry. <laughs> It's actually, it really is quite engaging, even though it doesn't seem to be. <laughs> You're listening to it. You're yeah. like, okay. Yeah. This I think, robot I think I might makes get, sense. I think I might get one of these for um, for Michael. I think he would, he would enjoy this. He and his friends would have tons of fun. So now we know if you really want to mess with somebody, you say, my name is, and then, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Leo, don't look at Leo, her. Leo, don't look at her. <laughs> Uh, one last quick thing, which I've shown before, is the Hugo Light. Um, I love these. Now, <clears throat> I have several, and I use these in a way that they're not really intended as a uh, ambient light source behind my television. Oh, that's smart. Yeah. But um, tell us all the features. I mean, well, I'm not using it, all the features of it. Um, you know, you can change the light with an app you can I mean if you this is a good gift for someone that is already in the Hue ecosystem if you yeah. already have because you you need a bridge you don't like many other smart lights don't need bridges now but you do so do you still do need the Hue bridge right so if they have a bunch of Hue lights this might be a nice gift to someone it's portable which is it's yeah because it's got a battery so you leave it plugged in but when the lights went out when we, the, we had the power outage oh. a couple of weeks ago the goes the glows continued oh and I was able to unplug it, and the, the lights are on, and I can carry it around the house. So it's a nice little emergency light, if oh, nothing yeah. else. Yeah. And, and of course, it's programmable, like all Hue lights. Right. I'm using it currently as part of my uh, holiday light spectacular outside my house, which I put together myself. Oh, I'd like to see that. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so it goes on. You it's know, not waterproof. You shouldn't leave out in the rain. Oh, you shouldn't? Oh, well, I don't on know. the porch? On the porch is probably. Yeah. Um, but. 
yesterday we were having a discussion and I had set my lights to go off at sunrise and you told me that spends a lot, wastes a lot of money. So thank you for that tip. I now automated them so that they go off at 1030. Yeah, once everybody's in bed, you don't need Christmas lights mm -hmm. on the front porch. I got, uh, a, in fact, maybe this will be one of my picks for next week, but uh, on uh, Stacey Higginbotham's recommendation, some outdoor uh, uh, echo-powered lights for my devices. And those you can not only use as a timer, but you can, you know, they could be anything you could do with your, you know, automation you could do with that. And so that that was that's kind of cool. Our Christmas lights go on at 5 and off at 11. Um, I guess you could do sunrise and sunset. You could. But. I mean, if, you know, you want the people that are up all night to see your lights. <laughs> uh, so that is $80, the Hue Go. But, you know, probably you might find a discount. A little pricey. I think it is. If you could get those at 50 they would be pretty desirable. I think, yeah, but an emergency light, not bad. So, yeah, that was a nice use, actually. I didn't anticipate, but we have two of them. It, it lit up the house until the power came back on. Yeah. It goes a few hours mm -hmm. with the the battery so like i said this uses the bridge because it doesn't want to put too much pressure on your wi-fi but a lot of these other things put put you know do use your wi-fi but now with mesh networking it's much easier and when i you look use... at me like that i feel like there's maybe something i should <laughs> there's tell a you. great mesh network that there you and i both use network. that yeah. is our sponsor yeah. of this show i love our eros you love Eero too mom yeah. i set up mom with Eero when the new eros came out I had an Eero system from the original Eros. I just gave it to my mother who was having internet issues. You saw when she was on the show, man, crystal clear video. She could wander around because the Eros are about solving the Wi-Fi problems we all suffer. The single router model, you know, the idea of having that one router near the, uh, you know, near the cable modem or the DSL modem powering the whole house. That hasn't worked in a long time. And it's not just... Uh, you know, it's not just distance. I mean, it's the number of devices. We're all loading our Wi-Fi down with dozens of devices now. At last count, I had 64 devices on my Wi-Fi network, including things like Go Lights and little robots and so forth. Uh, but also, it's your neighbors. Uh, everybody's got Wi-Fi now. Just look at the Wi-Fi drop-down on your computer or your phone, and you'll see dozens of Wi-Fi signals, and all of those interfere with one another. So Eero solves that. It is, uh, it's just simple physics, like light wave. Wi-Fi waves don't go through walls well. We know that. I mean, it's like saying, I want a light bulb in my living room to light up my, my bedside reading. It's just not going to happen. Same thing with Wi-Fi. What you need is a system that's distributed. That's what offices like ours have had for years. But the enterprise networking that we use is very expensive and requires an IT professional to configure and set up. Eero does it all for you. That a lot less. It's an enterprise-grade Wi-Fi system in your home. You could set it up very easily using the Eero app. You just plug in the base unit, as that fellow there in the picture on the screen is doing, and then fire up the app, and it'll walk you through each step of the process, placing the Eero beacons. These are the second the remote units, plugging them into the wall. They go right into the wall, by the way, and they're a nightlight. You, don't, you could turn it off, but I put them in the hall, that way we got night lights in the hall, which is awesome. It's easy. It's painless. You manage the network from the palm of your hand. In fact, I should show you my Eero app because I manage not only my network, but I'm managing my mom's network too because she's on Eero. So I can I can check if mom calls and says, hey, something's my Wi-Fi is down. I could check. I could see what her bandwidth is. I love it. And the new Eero Plus features are great if you have teenagers in the house. So here's my Wi-Fi network. But I can I can switch over. I can switch to my mom's network or any networks if you have a bunch of networks. And Sarah, there's mom's iPad is on there. I can see all the devices. She's only got five connected devices. I could, <laughs> I won't do this to her, but if you have teenagers in the house, one of the things that's great is you can, in fact, we'll go back to my network because I'll show you what we do. I assign all the devices to somebody in the house. So these are the family profiles. Michael's devices. I have a scheduled pause at 10 p.m. because he's a high schooler. He should go to bed on school nights, but that's just for school nights. What devices are assigned to his profile? The uh, This is his computer. This is his iPhone. Uh, I can assign more. I also have turned on for Michael the safe filters. Uh, and in fact, you're going to want to turn these on throughout the house. This is part of the Eero Plus. Safe searches on, filtering out inappropriate sites and images from Google, Bing search results, Google and Bing search results. I also block adult, illegal, criminal, or, and violent stuff. So you can turn those on or off. That, And you can even see, I won't embarrass Michael, but you can see how many things, 
have been blocked over the last <laughs> few weeks. Eero offers a guest access network, which is really great. I don't have mine enabled, but if you want to share your network with friends, you can do that. You can give them a QR code that they can scan so it's easy for them to set up. You can have those passwords expire if they're no longer your friends. And here's the most important thing when it comes to uh, Wi-Fi. Eero's update automatically. And, I, and we've been saying this for a while now. Uh, you should not buy any IoT device, especially a router, that isn't automatically updated so that if there's security flaws, uh, they're fixed without you having to worry about it. Uh, State-of-the-art WPA2 encryption. And also, because of these regular updates, Eero says, yeah, WPA3, when that's official, we will apply it as a software update to your router. That's fantastic. And great customer support. I, I pretended I was having problems. I called them up. I got, I got a Wi-Fi expert on the line within 30 seconds. They walked me through it. It was fantastic. We have five Eros in the house. The base unit and then the beacons spread around the house. That's because we have a fairly large spread out house and some particular problem areas. So I got a beacon for those problem areas. Each beacon, each unit goes about 1,500 square feet. So if you've got a normal you know, house of around 2,000, 2,500 square feet, a couple would do. You can buy them in packs if you want. You can see, by the way, if you pack, I'll just touch this one. You can see what the connection details are for any individual Eero, whether it's online, how many devices and which devices are connected to it. You really have control of your network. I am a huge fan. Oh, and I didn't mention, besides the Eero Plus filtering for young people, I've got Eero Plus turned on throughout the house. It does a couple of things. It blocks malware, spyware, phishing attacks, unsuitable content if you want, and I have it doing ad blocking as well. So this is really a solution for everybody. I am a huge fan. We'll show you the Ad blocking is in beta right now. Advanced security. Uh, turn those on or off. It really is very, very handy. And even somebody like my mom, uh, who is I feel safe, protected. She can control it, but I can also control it remotely, which is really great. Eero Plus automatically tags sites that contain violent, illegal, or adult content. You can choose what your kids can or cannot visit right in the Eero app. I'm, I can go on and on, and I have, you know... <laughs> I've, I've bored my friends and neighbors singing the praises of my Eero. I don't want to bore you. I just want to tell you right now, go on out. Look at this. Since November 25th, last two days, 96,400 inspections. These are the, these are the devices. These are the, these are the threats. It's inspected. I can see it for the month. It's 1.1 million sites have been inspected. It's blocked four threats. Really good news. Uh, in fact, this is cool. This was a friend of Michael's. Aiden was visiting. It blocked a threat on his because anybody in the house that's using our Wi-Fi will also be protected. But I'm proud to say no content blocking this week, Michael. Oh, let's just see if started a month, a few yesterday. earlier. But uh, we won't mention. We won't uh, mention that. Never. If you got a 16 year old, you you probably want to get an Eero. Never think about Wi-Fi again and get a hundred dollars right now. This is their special. Off the Eero base unit and two beacons package, which is just about right. Most homes, that's just about what you want. Um, and one year of Eero Plus, too, by visiting Eero.com slash twit and entering the code twit at the checkout. I'm going to say something about Eero that I really like. Eero Plus is a great feature, but you don't have to subscribe to it. The router will work even if you don't subscribe. Eero Plus, I pay it. It's worth it. 100 bucks a year. Totally worth it. But unlike other routers, you don't have to pay for Eero Plus to use your Eero router. You may want to, and you do get the first year free. When you go to Eero.com slash twit and use the code twit at checkout. Eero solves so many problems for us, uh, and I just love them. So even if they weren't a sponsor, I'd be singing their praises. Eero.com slash twit. We thank them for supporting iOS today. I love Eero. And if you got an Eero f as a gift for someone last year, maybe the subscription this year. That's a good that's a good gift, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. The um, It's funny because I gave you every mesh router under the sun to try and you ended up use, mm -hmm. choosing the Eero. So mm -hmm. that says something right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some news. This just came down the, uh -oh. the news pike. Uh, Google will reportedly open Project Fi to iPhone. That would be huge. Yeah. Also Samsung and OnePlus. But. So Project Fi, which I think they're just going to call Fi going forward, uh, is Google's MVNO. That stands for mo mo uh, mo 
mobile virtual network operator. That means they rent internet and phone access from existing telephone companies. In the case of Google, not just one, but three, the U.S. Cellular, T-Mobile, and Sprint. And what Fi does that's so cool is the phone will detect which is a better signal, the Wi-Fi in your house, the T-Mobile, the Sprint, or the U.S. Cellular, and it'll use that one transparently hand off from one to the other, doesn't drop calls, doesn't change, you won't notice, but over, over as you drive around or you go to other cities, you will be using, and even as you travel internationally, and that's another thing that's great about Fi, the pricing, $20 a month for text, unlimited talk and text, and then uh, you pay a, $10 a gigabyte, but no more than $60. So after six gigabytes, they turn the billing off. And that's even in international markets for the data. So that's a great, I, I love Fi. But it's been limited, and I thought, I thought it was limited because of the technology to phones made by Google and then a handful of other Android phones recently. But the fact that they're going to extend it, that's good news. I don't know if that means Apple will have to do something different in its iPhone so that it can detect the network and, and hand it off, or if that's something that the iPhone could just do naturally yeah. anyway. But that is... I uh, it's certainly worth looking at. I think it's a it's maybe not the least expensive mobile network, but I think it's a very good. I, I love my uh, my pixels on Google Fi. Yeah, it might be the one thing that finally gets me off Sprint. Probably not. Well, if you're you know if you're a Sprint or T-Mobile customer, it's a better choice. Yeah, I think less expensive in most cases. Although T-Mobile has some pretty low priced offerings, but you then get the benefit of both, mm -hmm. right? And U.S. Cellular. Do they? Uh, I guess they. Experience, if some customers experience slower speeds if they cross 15 gigabytes, but that's... Yeah, as, as with all carriers, it's not unlimited. You get slowed down throughput if you use a lot. 15 is a pretty high number. Yeah. Uh, that's just, that's mostly so I think you don't use it, you know, as your main internet connection. Right. You can hotspot it, yeah. so for no good. additional charge. So yeah. I that's what I do all the time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In fact, I've got, oh, another thing, if you get five, the SIM card in my, this has always been the case, the SIM card in my iPad is a Google Fi data oh. sim. They, they make, you can get for free data only sims. And I have them in a number of computers. It identifies as a T-Mobile network. Oh, no, it doesn't. It says Project Fi up in the upper left-hand corner. So it knows I'm on a Project Fi network. That's, I think, something new. It didn't used to do that. So uh, that's great, too, because that means $10 a gigabyte, but only as you use it. So it's a great way of putting LTE in a device like an iPad and only paying as you go. Mm -hmm. Uh, yesterday, the Supreme Court held a uh, hearing in the case Apple versus Pepper. So that Robert Pepper is the customer who um, said that uh, he Apple was charging him too much uh, for in, for apps. And that That's kind of goofy. That's the issue is the monopoly. Yeah. Um, it's kind of goofy that they're charging too much. But, well, but but that they only, you know, that, that, that that's the only place you can buy them. Which well, is true. I, you know, it's funny. I didn't know this, but I learned it from the suit. Apple requires that all app prices end in 99. Oh. That's why there's no $5 apps. It's 4 dollars That makes sense. They're all 99 why, I don't know. Why do they do that? This is Just Apple. So they're control, they're control nice. freaks. Yeah. I don't know. But uh, but the, his premise is that you should be able to pay less than 99 cents for an app. I don't know. Well, the monopoly thing I understand, but there's good reasons. Apple says, well, we have a monopoly. because we that way we can vet everything and make your phone more secure. But... Uh, with uh, Android devices, for instance, you can buy things from other stores, mm -hmm. not just the Google Play Store. And it's not as secure. As a result, if you want, well, it's not as secure if you turn that feature off. If you say, yeah, I want to, there's a setting in the settings that says, yeah, it effectively jailbreaks the Google phones, the Android phones, and says, yeah, I want to be able to get it from third party stores. But that's on you. They give you a big warning, and you should be very careful if you do that where you buy stuff or, or get it. So, I mean, the big question is, it's one of those things where they're working on uh, precedent that's based on technology or no technology of years ago, like, you know, price fixing. And But it is true that you cannot buy an app for your iPhone or iPad in any place but the App Store. So is that, does that mean they're a monopoly? And what does that mean for Apple? That's going to be an I interesting question. I can't wait. Question. Did you listen to or read about the uh, comments from the justices as they heard the arguments? I did not see those, but I'm curious. What they might I have didn't. Said. I mean, I mostly read uh, Ben Thompson's piece in Stratechery, which that I mean. That's well, always a good place to go. What, always, is, what I, is his thought on this? Uh, his thought is the most important part of this is uh, what these questions. So, okay, he said there's three points to make about the case: the specific antitrust doctrine at question, 
Second, the question of whether the app store is a monopoly. And third, that the very existence of these questions, what the very existence of these questions says about Apple. And so that's the most important thing. Like going forward, what, what does this mean for Apple? Apple makes a strong case that by controlling this so tightly, they protect their users. And I think a lot of people, and I'll include myself in this, buy iPhones because they are more secure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I let you buy get me a iPhones because they're that. more secure. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know what? You'd buy it if I didn't. I, right? di I would. Yeah. I would. I mean, I did used to use Android, but I don't think at this point, I mean, that was five, six years ago, but I don't, I don't think I would now. It's mm -hmm. just, I don't know. Um, the, this is good news. Um, Tim Cook tweeted about this. Apple is, uh, has just announced a new program for female app developers and entrepreneurs. Um, it is the new entrepreneur camp offers immersive technology uh, and more, an immersive technology lab and more for female app developers who are founders and entrepreneurs. So I like Tim's tweet about this. Apps are for everyone. They should be made by everyone. Yeah. Do you, uh, that's interesting. Do you, um, some will say, well, why should women get special treatment? But it's, it's like affirmative action. It's like, well, we want to get, and Apple, you know, it's so funny because Apple is also criticized uh, as are all the tech companies, especially for so few women on the board, so few women in, uh, in C-level positions, so few programmers, so few women engineers. Uh, but the only way to fix that would be to really promote it, to encourage women, especially younger women, to, mm -hmm. to get into the field. And I think that those things are working. I think you're going to see a group of women coming up who are currently in high school and college mm -hmm. who will be uh, employed by companies like Apple. So you can make the case Apple needs to do this if you want diversity. And, and, and Tim Cook says, he in last week in an interview, said, yeah, we understand that diversity is a big problem. We think we're doing a good job to, promote, you know, to, to fix it. But we know there's more to be done. Mm -hmm. That's what this is. Right? Yeah, an entrepreneur camp. So I'm, I mean, I probably shouldn't ask you because you're a woman. But uh, do you think singling out women uh, in this way, like giving them program? special opportunities is yeah, okay? I think it's okay. Yeah. I do. I do too. I think, um, yeah, I, I do think that giving women uh, more opportunities it's, it's is great. The, I guess the point is there are plenty of opportunities for men. Mm -hmm. There are plenty of places men can go. There's nobody, there's nowhere that says app cap for men. Yeah, app camp for men. App camp for men. Yeah. Because, uh, there, you know, we have all the opportunities, but maybe we need to do a little more to encourage women by saying, here, this one's for you. Yeah. I mean, it's just, you know, if you have like a app camp for kids, it's often going to be mostly boys for right. whatever reason. Like, I And I think that's off-putting to the girls, right? Yeah, sometimes. I mean, there's all kinds of reasons. I just, yeah. I think there's, one, there's one girl in a group of 20 guys, uh, you know, learning how to program. The guys are going to dominate the conversation. I think the, the young lady, unless she's particularly forceful, like my daughter, Abby, is going to get steamrolled. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to have a space where it's mostly women and they won't get steamrolled. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so it's an application process and then, they'll you know, you have to apply for it. So. Cool, do it. Get your uh, get your high school. What is the age group, uh, any particular age Let's group? Let's see. Um, it, it is not, I don't think it's for young it's for people. anybody. Um, nice. To be eligible for the program, applying app-driven businesses must be female-founded. So it's a company that you've already founded a company. you got a startup. Okay. Uh, Co-founded or led and have at least one woman on the development team. So there's there's other men. Men can be on the development team as well. Okay. As a, you have a working app or a prototype and a desire to leverage Apple technologies nice. to benefit their mission. Excellent. Begins January 2019. I like it. So, uh, ready for some questions? I am. Okay. Uh, Rick sent us a video uh, through Google Photos. Thank you, Rick. And he had a question about watch complications. By which we mean those little doohickeys on mm -hmm. the watch face. Mm -hmm. On the Apple Watch. Yeah. Do you want me to play it from here? Because I can. Okay. <laughs> hey, Megan. It's uh, Rick in North Carolina. We can't uh, see it. On, I've oh. got an ad Apple Watch uh, Series 4. I've got an ad... <laughs> I can't John, it's got to be driving you crazy. What's going on? Just press the space bar, see if that does it. I've got an ad Apple Watch uh, Series 4, and it's got the GPS on it and sailor on it. I'm using, Ooh, as look. you see, the uh, InfoCast uh, watch face, which I really like. 
Uh, what I'd like to see is a digital clock down in place of where that sleep app is down on the bottom. As you can see from this, that it's uh, uh, approximately 341 or almost 342. I'd like to see a digital clock down there that print showed or illustrated what uh, the hours and minutes are. And unlike uh, Alex on MacBreak Weekly, I don't particularly care about the seconds, but I sure would like to see the uh, hours and minutes uh, and use that in place of the sleep app. Uh, hope things are going well and uh, take care. Bye. Hey, I Megan. So uh, this is, by the way, I'm with you uh, because I actually don't use the oh. the analog version of the Infograph uh, watch face. I think we're looking at his watch. I use... Uh, Infograph modular. M yeah, I use the one with the digital clock because yeah. I like to see a digital clock. And Me too. That way I get more, a little more information on there. But it's not as pretty, I have to say, mm -hmm. as the uh, Infograph. Uh, so I think you can do that. Let me, let me just try it because I think you can do that. I'm going to press this and customize... And then I'm going to change uh, this complication. That's what these little things are. I'm going to change this one. Scroll. Oh, let's go here. Oh, I'll change. I'll change the one in the upper right, which is currently date. No, I don't have a choice on that one. Let's do this one. Uh, I'm going to change it to the world clock. Yeah. But the, but do a world clock with my current time zone, right? The problem is the world clock. When oh, it's, it's analog. Around, when it's a round complication, it's analog. Uh, when it's a rectangular complication so you'd have to do it somewhere where it's rectangular so okay so i have the infograph on my phone here um and there is a digital time session section in the sub dial top so in other words it has to be in the right part so of the sub of the dial face. top is this one uh, right here i don't know if you can get it. see that um so there's digital time so i could change you know this is where you change it so there's digital time so the world there, time so. You digital. could use the world time, but if but but better digital time. That's yeah. giving you seconds even, which is nice. Right. Um, oh, that actually makes that watch face maybe a little yeah, more useful. I right? think I think yeah. so. I don't, the only reason I don't use this is weirdly I like the pocket casts complication, and mm -hmm. it doesn't have the pocket cast complication for some reason on yeah. here. I don't know So why. these new uh, watch faces, this is kind of a source uh, for some people of... Uh, Com consternation mm -hmm. have a new style of complication and so pocket cast will eventually support that mm -hmm. but not all applications yet support the new complications so if you use an older watch face a different watch face yeah. one of the original watch faces mm -hmm. you can put pocket casts in there i use that um, but not the infograph this is which is what is this one called this one that we used to both use the... yeah i think that's info right or something like that yeah and a so modular. It's modular, modular yeah and yeah. so there's my pocket cast i have yeah. pocket cast activity workout clock time timer but yeah so digital time is one of the so i haven't seen that that's a is that a new complication I've, i don't know I've not seen um, that before. That's yeah it's uh i had to there, there's many reddit conversations about yes. apple watch complications that's, and i had to spend some that's the good place time to finding. go if you want to kind of nitpick apple right and so um, it's use the digital time in the sub dial top position and it's much easier to change in the watch app in your phone than it is on the watch itself yeah, that's how I usually uh, mm -hmm. do that. So in the subdial top, right now I have my calendar. Mm -hmm. there, there's a lot of space in that, but there's a digital time. I didn't even see that. And actually that makes a lot of sense because that's, that's given you, you could still use the analog clock face, which mm -hmm. is prettier, mm -hmm. but I find it harder to read. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Actually, there's certain things that a sweep second hand is more useful for. Yeah, I that's agree. That's why they have multiple time uh, watch faces because... You know, that, now you can change it. But yeah. it is nice because I had the air quality index on my watch face when we had really bad air, but then I took it off now because I don't need to. Isn't that funny? I did too. Yeah. And I put just just press record back mm. where it was. Uh, yeah, that's another nice thing about these is you can change them as needed. We mm -hmm. had a lot of really smoky air from the, the uh, fires uh, mm -hmm. in uh, Northern California. And as a result, uh, we liked to see if we could breathe today. And so mm -hmm. AQI was really useful. Yeah, luckily we can breathe. We can breathe. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Chimp Magnet had a question on Twitter. Uh, he or she, Chimp Magnet, wanted to know uh, if I knew of a coloring book app 
for a four to five year old. And I put this out to Twitter because I don't really remember what the dexterity of a four to five year old is. And I wanted to warn Chimp Magnet and you all, which Chimp Magnet already knew, is that a lot of these coloring book apps have really high weekly subscriptions, yeah. like over $10. That's ridiculous. Um, so I do, my, my coloring book app of choice is Lake. Um, but I think this is not so good for a four or five year old. This seems hard. to me Too hard. hard. Yeah. Um, but so I, I don't know if anybody else um, has a suggestion, um, email me, let me know. Cause the subscription for Lake, I, I can't remember what it is, but it is not, it's uh, monthly $8 a month. Um, or you could just pay $60 a year. The, the many suggestions I got on Twitter were just, how about a coloring book with crayons from the dollar store? Which is one option, but then you don't get to use your Apple Pencil. So, and you know, it's a lot of paper, a lot of stuff to bring and me could be messy. You don't, don't want to necessarily give a crayon to a four, I don't know, to four or five year olds still write on the walls. That was something that I don't remember. <laughs> no, they write on the iPad now. That's the beauty of <laughs> yeah. it. Instead of writing on the walls. Um, so hopefully uh, we'll get some more suggestions of, um, of coloring book apps so, cool. so we can send them those. No, you haven't gotten them yet though. Well, let's see. Um, no, that was just, that was just this morning. Just this morning. Um, yeah. There's got, I'm sure there's a dozen of them. That's um, attractive. This is from uh, Padre. Father Robert, Robert is uh, says, putting makeup on his bulldog. Yeah. At, that's something he's doing in the church. How is a four or five year old supposed to color the family dog with the Apple, iPad pencil? <laughs> oh, I <So>. get it. <laughs> Apparently we're, we're pro crayons on Twitter. So, <laughs> Wow. Um, so yeah, uh, and Liz said Lake has a free tier. That's the one that I like. Pigment. Have you used Pigment? Did mm, I, have no, I used I Pigment? Don't, I'm not a I guess I have guy. used Pigment. I should get into um, it. Pigment I, is one that that I have used in the past as well. Um, and but again, I think these are mostly adult coloring books. This is five dollars a week auto renewing. That's just ridiculous. <laughs> I just I I'm amazed that well, this is an example of the. The monopoly in the app store, I mm -hmm. guess. I, it seems odd. Um, seems like there should be some stuff. I wonder if Toka makes a coloring book. Oh, Toka is very good. popular with the kids, right? Mm -hmm. They have so many great... In fact, it's funny because we've mentioned this before years ago. Um, let's see. Brush and Smudge. Seems like Brush and Smudge would be exactly the kind of coloring book a five-year-old would want. Look at this. Yeah. Look at that. And does it work with the Apple Pencil? Well, you can you can do it with your fingers. <laughs> he was looking for the Apple Pencil. Oh, I bet. She. Why would she? All right. Let me install Brush and Smudge, <laughs> and I'll tell you. I'll tell you. See, we we take a hit, so so you do. You don't have no, to. No, I just, I just accidentally subscribed to Pigment. I want to yeah, the to. subscriptions are the big ones. There's an animal coloring book. Got to think that that's going to be uh, popular with uh, young people. Doesn't anything that works with your finger work with a pencil? Or are you looking for special capabilities? I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know if every app works with the Apple Pencil. Well, here's Brush and we Smudge. Figure it out right let me, now. Let me let me pull up an album. No, I don't want to I don't want a tutorial. A, you don't want a coloring? Let's tutorial? see if I can color this in. Yeah. It's a pretty ugly color. Let me let me go pick something. What color is a cow? Blue, right? Okay. So, no, was that one free? Uh, it's free. There is probably some in-app purchases. Oh, look, you know what I like? It kind of colors within the lines. Kind of. Well, <laughs> you, if you're close, it'll oh, do yeah. it. Oh, yeah, look there, it does. Right? It lets you kind of go out of the lines, too, but if you're close, it'll do it. I do like the I ones think that a five-year-old would find this pretty yeah. fun, don't you? So that's Toka or Toka Brush and Smudge? No, it's just called Brush and Smudge. Brush and Smudge. Um, let's see what the in-app purchase situation is, though, right? Because... Um, you don't want to hand it over to your kid with, you know, your five-year-olds. Well, here's albums it comes with. If they don't. Purchases. There are 10 new pictures. Oh, you buy a coloring book one at a time. So a dollar nine, not subscription, but a dollar ninety-nine, and I can buy 10 new am, 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 images. I think that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. And I bet you they have other, uh, this looks pretty good, brush and smudge. And then we can go to our gallery, which has nothing in it. So it comes with one album. Oh, look at this. Open all albums, five ninety nine right now. Oh, that's good. No subscription. Yeah, that is good. Brush and smudge. So think of it as six bucks and you get all of this. And I think this is easy enough 
for a kid, I like it that it has kind of, you know, I can, I can have a palette of different colors. Not sure how this works. Different brushes. Oh, let me do this. Let's paint the sky blue. Oh, see how easy that was? Yeah. See, I think a kid would like that. So that that brush is a, a fill brush. So let's see what else. Uh, let's see. Uh, make make the boat black. Oh, that's see. This is nice. So if a kid's really kind of just learning how to use the pencil and the and the iPad, uh, this is my speed. <laughs> and then you have a very fine brush you could use if you wanted oh. for uh, for fine details. I wonder if this one lets you color uh, outside. Let's make his eyes purple. Yeah, this to me, this is my kind of coloring book. Look at that. Oh, yeah. That's pretty cool, yeah. huh? Mm -hmm. All right, brush and smudge is our choice. Brush and smudge. What's this? Is this water? I'm making a watercolor? Oh, I, that's the clear. Okay, so as you make colors or use colors, it'll then uh, add them to your, your palette. I kind of like that. It even has little highlights built in, so... Your kids are going to get the satisfaction that they're actually creating real art without doing anything. It's very soothing, isn't it? Yeah. Um, Patrick Delahanty just uh, also replied to the tweet and said that he and you know his wife is an artist. She draws graphic novels, and he is a developer. So to, he said together they're going to make a coloring book app. So let's what? He said we, he just got the idea, and he what? would not charge ten dollars a month for it either. Good for you, Patrick D. So, he knows how to do that kind of stuff. Mm hmm. Look at that, the Jolly Roger. Oh, what color should that flag be? I think yellow. Oh, I forgot to choose the color, but. Oh, look. Oh, oh, I get it. Tapping it more makes it yellower. <laughs> I'll be back with you later. Okay. Oh, this is uh, fun. How do you make brown kids? Maybe you mix a little yellow and a little purple together. This also teaches them color theory. Look at this. Look at that. Oh, this is clearly the right way to go. Brush and smudge. It's my app cap. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad that we found that together. I'm glad you found it to keep you busy. Uh, did you want to see my uh, weekly writing update from Grammarly? How productive I was? Oh, yeah. How productive how, were you? I love, these, I love these stats. Grammarly is our sponsor mm -hmm. uh, for the show. Grammarly is a great way to improve your writing. And some people think, oh, it's just going to be a grammar nanny looking over my shoulder. Oh, no, 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 my friends. Yes, it'll correct grammar, but it'll also suggest clearer writing, more effective writing. It even said, <laughs> I hope Lisa doesn't mind. You know, sometimes Lisa, you know, our my wife and our CEO, our boss, is... Because she's got a lot to do. She can be maybe seemingly brusque because she's her emails are short and to the point. But sometimes maybe that's not right. Grammarly will say, you know, you might want to put, you might want to soften, you might want to put a please and thank you in there. It literally suggests that. And she's great. She says, yeah, thank you for that suggestion. Grammarly is awesome. Let's see your stats. Well, I uh, this is I'm most proud of the fact that I'm I've used more unique words than 97% of Grammarly users. Here. That could be good or bad. I, don't know. I think sometimes it's better to use sesquipedalian words for total <laughs> yes, comprehension. Sometimes yeah. um, I was only twenty seven percent more accurate than uh, most grammarly. Well, users. you're ahead of the pack. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, I was ninety two percent more productive. It really rewards you for writing. Mm -hmm. Helps people show their best self through writing, and it's available everywhere you use your computer there's a keyboard for the ipad a grammarly keyboard there's an online browser extension there's a desktop editor so you can work in grammarly it is a communication tool i think it's the best way to think of it that helps people improve their writing to be mistake free clear and effective you and i uh you know we studied this stuff in college right so i was a writing major you were writing so and yet and i think this is really important uh, even you gets can learn from Grammarly mm -hmm. and can get value out of it. I, you know, you'll be writing more confidently at school, at work, on the go. This would be a great gift for somebody entering college or entering high school to help them get really get more confidence about what they're writing. Because sometimes what Grammarly will say that was well done. You know, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. Or they'll tell you your reading score, so how hard it was to read. And and it, of course, it depends on what you're writing. And Grammarly's smart enough to know the context. So if you're doing a business proposal, that's one thing, an academic essay, another thing, a blog post, something else in, entirely. 
I love Grammarly. You will, too. And right now, you get 20% off Grammarly Premium if you go to Grammarly.com slash iOS today. I am one of those people who, for a long time, said, I don't need this. I am, My grammar is excellent. I'm an excellent grammarian. It's actually more embarrassing if you say, I, you know, I'm a great grammarian, and then you let something slip through. That's, that's when it's really humiliating. And everybody lets something slip through once in a while. Grammarly helps you. Look your best, be your best. Grammarly.com slash iOS today. And just a little note, Grammarly and grammar, the word, are spelled with two A's. There's no E in grammar. There's not no I in grammar either, but E is one that people often think. G-R-A-M-M-A-R-L-Y.com slash iOS today. We thank Grammarly for not only for supporting iOS today, but for making us look better. Mm -hmm. Love Grammarly. Time for our app caps. I'm going to change mine in midstream, but go ahead and you Is do yours. Is smudge and paint? Today? Smudge and paint. It's, <laughs> it's, no, no. I have okay. something else I forgot about. Okay. Well, I already talked about Pocket Cast, and I've talked about it many times. We but love Pocket Cast. People continue to ask me, what's your favorite podcast app? Or they'll complain about something in the Apple Podcast mm -hmm. app, and I say, I, did, I don't have an issue with that because I use Pocket Cast. They just came out with uh, version 7 of, of Pocket Cast, and I love it. And mostly I love what they've done with the Apple Watch app. And it's a companion app. It's not a standalone app. So you can't, I, I don't usually listen to podcasts without my phone and only my watch. So, and I, I don't know how many people really do. I think they said eventually they're going to come up with a standalone uh, podcast app for Pocket Casts for your Apple Watch. But for now, I just use the complication as you see there. And um, I like it because I can control my, uh, while my podcasts are playing, mostly in the car, it's very easy to just stop something or at a stoplight or anytime. If I'm uh, playing uh, podcasts on, you know, on Bluetooth, connected to anything or connected to headphones, I can just um, go through here. And I like the up next feature because, you know, there's all these podcasts you hear about or episodes you hear about. And I like just being able to add them to the up next and be able to see them. Or I have different playlists of podcasts starred podcasts and it's super easy to control them. Here's what the iPad app looks like. It's very beautiful, I think. Here's all my podcasts that I subscribe to. Another thing the new version does is you can listen to an episode without subscribing it. I recommend that for any podcast besides ours. You should definitely subscribe to ours. If you're going to listen, just go ahead and subscribe. But if you're trying something new from some other network, just try it. You don't have to subscribe. That's a new feature. Um, it has filters so you can, um, like I have this new releases filter. So it's everything that's just new. I want to, I have all these podcasts that I subscribe to. I'm never going to get through all of them. So I have uh, the new releases. Okay, okay what's, what's just the newest stuff that I want to listen to? And that's here. The discover tab is uh, great if you uh, have run out of podcasts. I don't know who you are if you run out of podcasts, but uh, you can discover new podcasts through topics, which is way, this is way better than how the Apple App Store um, organizes podcasts. You can see like what's popular in the United States or networks. So, you know, if you just want to see everything from Twit, there we are in the networks and you can see all of our shows right there. Uh, and it syncs across my iPad and my Apple Watch and my iPhone, which I really love. And there are tons of settings. Um, you can look at things uh, like I have it or by list. Um, you can sort by, change the sort by. And so I was so excited about all these changes and I went and I wanted to see what other changes people liked. And I saw a lot of people complaining about the new update. You like can't they didn't change like it. anything without somebody complaining. Right. It's Whether true. it's better or worse. People will complain. Right. So they've just changed. But, I mean, the setting, they, they will let you change it to back to what, oh. what it was. I mean, basically it was. That's the way to handle uh, it. Yeah. Pocket Casts um, went through and answered all of these tweets of people like, oh, I hate the new update. You can't do this. And they were like, well, it's in settings. And you just go da, da, da. So if there's something you hate about the new update, just go into the settings and fix it um, because it's super easy. So I love Pocket Casts uh, from Shifty Jelly. And, um, yeah, that's, uh, it is my favorite podcast app. I highly recommend it. Uh, uh, Russell Ivanovich, who's a good friend of, um, nice Australian of, guy of, uh, Andy's on my break weekly. Yep. Um, he created it and he's super responsive too. We should point out though, that this is the first edition of pocket Casts under new ownership. So they were purchased by public radio. Mm -hmm. And, uh, my concern when that happened almost a year ago 
was, oh, no, Pocket Cast is the greatest independent podcast app. We've recommended it for years. Uh, is is public radio going to make it suddenly be the public radio podcast app? And they haven't. Mm -hmm. In fact, they've made it better. So I'm, I'm very grateful to them and to Russell. I presume Russell's still working on it mm -hmm. um, for, for keeping the spirit of Pocket Cast. Because this is... I, uh, after iTunes, it's the number one way people listen to our shows. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Mm. People love Pocket Cast. It, I think it is the dominant pocket podcast application after iTunes. Um, or Apple's podcast, I guess, uh, would count. <sighs> so what's your... So my, uh, I changed my app cap uh, at the beginning, before the show began. I told you uh, a really cool music synthesizer. Maybe I'll do that next week. But I realized that I discovered something this week. Remember, I got the new, we both did, got the new iPad Pro. I got the 12.9. And one of the things that was missing in the past for me was a way to participate in our IRC chat. I thought it'd be really nice. I mean, I could do it on the web and Safari, but I thought it'd be really nice to have a, an IRC app. And it turns out there's a very good one, and it's free. Thank you, Jonathan Clough, uh, on uh, iOS. It's called Mutter, an IRC client. It's open source, uh, free, and I think it's dynamic, dynamite. Um, IRC is an old-school chat system that uh, has been around forever it's what we use for our uh, our chat the kids in the back of the class who are watching the show and uh, i've been looking for something that is as good as textual or x chat this is very much like x chat for ios now ios has limitations about what can happen in the background you can continue to show my screen uh so mutter will not run 100 percent in the background but It'll stay in the background and relaunch very quickly and connect you right away. As you see, uh, it's been running in the background, our IRC chat. Uh, it's completely very customizable uh, in, in a whole bunch of ways. I like it that I can go full screen. I can make the, the text bigger. Uh, I can make it smaller. Um, it is, uh, you can see I can swipe in between different channels, which is really handy. Uh, it does images in line. There's a, there's a Seinfeld broccoli clip, <laughs> thanks to Chad Dimple in our chat room. I just think this is fantastic. I really needed something that would allow me to swipe in between applications on, oh, you know, I could do a little, I could be doing my coloring <laughs> and, then, uh, and then say, oh, you know, I'm done coloring. Let's go back to the chat room and see if anything interesting has happened and, and get Mutter up and running. I won't go through all the uh, configuration settings. Uh, I've customized this to, uh, it has a lot of themes, so I've customized it to the, the color I want. And uh, and uh, I've turned off, for instance, um, the time stamps and so forth. But there is, a, there is a ton of stuff that you can do, including special keys. You can kick, for a while they, they uh, did not have uh, a way to hide join and part messages, which I don't like to see. So you can hide them if you want. Uh, you can choose whether you see inline images or not. Um, where's the full settings? I've forgotten now uh, for Mutter. But it, it, is a, it is a really nice IRC client. I can see all the users in our channel. And as you can see, there's, there's quite a few. So if you want to participate in chat, well, one of the things you could do is have a copy of Twit running and be in the chat at the same time on the iPad. This is something that's been the holy grail for Twit viewers for a long time. I think I, you know, I actually haven't tried this, but let's see, I'm gonna, let's let's go to my Twit and watch uh, Twit live. Here's our live stream. And uh, I'm gonna get this down into a, a little, whoops. Oh, I'm gonna get this down into the little <laughs> inset there, see? And then I'm gonna go back into Mutter and yeah, look at that. Now this is something everybody for a long time has wanted to be able to do, which is watch our shows and participate in chat at the same time. Wait a minute. What's what's going on? He's wandering around. He's Vector's wandering around. Hello, Vector. Hello, so, Leo. Don't look at her. So I really, I really like, I really like this, and it's free, which I really like saying as well. So Mutter, uh, IRC. If you search the App Store for Mutter IRC, there are. By the way, it's not just us. There's lots of other IRC channels out there. It is still widely used. I know people have shifted over to discord and other uh, other kind of messaging and chat apps but irc is the king of the hill the old one and the one we continue to use for good reason i think it's a, a really stable platform and man i just love it now that i can have a f i can i can be sitting uh, on the couch or 
you know, and just have my iPad in my lap and be watching the shows and chatting at the same time. So if you're one of those people that does that, and I know there are a few of you, uh, this is a great solution and really works beautifully on the 12.9 inch. This is almost the ideal way uh, to watch uh, Twit, I think, and participate. I, I feel like you call them the Discord. people in the back of the class. I feel like they're in the front of the class. They're in front of us. Oh. I know. He's yeah, almost walked off that. the edge. <laughs> but you can't see it, but Vector's very, he's taking chances. Yeah, he really is. <laughs> Hello, Leo. Don't look at her. <laughs> I love that. Uh, um they are in front of us, but I feel like they're not f in the front of this. They're kind of like we're the teachers in front of the classroom, uh -huh. and then there's kids throwing spitballs at us. Oh, that's them? That's them. I thought it was people that help us and, you know, help the teachers. Just shows they're... you the different points of view. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Hello, Vector. Don't look at her. Um, this is the saddest part of my week when the show's over. I know. It's so much fun doing I iOS know, today. We're so is. glad you watch. We hope you will continue to do so. Um, we've got a couple more episodes in 2019, 2018, mm -hmm. and then we're going to break. We rec we've already recorded our best of, mm -hmm. which is fun. A lot of uh, fun moments from the year. That'll be... So this is a complicated because uh, we do the show on Tuesday, and this year Christmas is on Tuesday, and New Year's Day is on Tuesday. So we will show the best of on December 25th and January 1st, and then we'll be back January 8th, 2019 for all new iOS Today episodes. We're going to have a great year in 2019, I have a feeling, mm -hmm. especially with these new iPads. Mm -hmm. I expect this to be the year that the iPad really starts to show its promise mm -hmm. with these brand new uh, iPad Pros, so lots of power, and, uh, and developers like Adobe starting to put desktop quality applications on the iPad. I'm very excited. Thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. We do the show every Tuesday as soon as Leo gets here. Trying to get here at 9. Failed almost every time. Uh, 9.30? 9, 9.30 Pacific yeah, if time. if you try to get here at 9.30, you've been doing pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> that would be noon or 12.30 Pacific, uh, Eastern time. Uh, that would be about 1700, 1730 UTC. You know, come in early. Be a part of the kids in the back of the class at irc.twit.tv. Moan and groan about Leo's tardiness and uh, we'll just do the show for you it's a great way to do it if you can watch live twit.tv slash live but of course uh the final perfect version where we edit out all the mistakes is available uh, shortly after we record the show on tuesdays and the best way to get that the on-demand audio or videos to go to twit.tv slash ios you can also uh, subscribe in podcasts or whatever your favorite podcast application is just look for ios today subscribe and then the, the minute it's done it usually comes out later in the day on tuesday you'll have a copy on your phone your tablet your desktop and be able to listen whenever you feel like it don't forget your voice assistant also knows about ios today mm -hmm. i don't know how maybe vector does maybe. we'll see when vector gets amazon echo you'll be able to say hey vector listen to ios today podcast and it'll start playing. But it does work a little bit better with your Amazon Echo, your Google Home, uh, your your Home Pod. Is, is he really confused? I, I don't know. Yeah, he says, never mind. Don't look at her. <laughs> um, in most cases, just, you know, hey, you know who? Listen to iOS Today podcast. We'll get you the most recent episode. If people want to ask questions, uh, how can they do that, Megan? Megan at twit.tv or iOS today at twit.tv. And you, over the holiday, even answered some questions. You were like, did? I guess you that did. That was a mistake. <laughs> you did. That won't ever happen I was like, look again. at that. Leo's answering questions in the email. <laughs> <laughs> All <laughs> right. Sometimes know. I look at my email. You know what? Now that I have it on the iPad, oh. I can be sitting. I can be watching TV. I can maybe answer a little email, mm -hmm. chat a little in the chat room. This thing is, is really made for a, kind of a more too. convenient uh, mm -hmm. interaction with the audience. So I'm going to, maybe I will appear from time to time in the email. When you're not coloring in your new coloring book. Man, I love that. What was that? Smudge and mudge? <laughs> brush, and, brush and smudge? Oh, look at this. You can actually watch iOS today while you brush and smudge. <laughs> that is really, that is really awesome. In most cases, just, you know, hey, you know who. And uh, let the, oh, oh. Today podcast. We'll get you I, I swiped it over too far. If people want to ask and, questions. And uh, let's do a, uh, a kind of a lightish, lightish blue. There we go. And I'm going to make this, oh, I need a bigger brush. Let's do this guy. Thank you for joining us on iOS Today. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Woo!